Hello, everyone. This talk is about a new kind of verification, verifying the execution of a remote and black box transactional key value store. In this talk, I will simply call such a store a database. Let's start with the motivating example. Imagine a company which has geo-distributed offices and uses a web application. Dana works at this company and has been given the responsibility of deploying this application. For performance and fault tolerance, Dana wants to use a cloud database at the backend. However, cloud databases are complicated black boxes running in a different administrative domain from the company. So Dana wants to know whether the database behaves as expected or as promised. Dana's concern is legitimate. We've seen many cloud failures in reality. Meanwhile, any internal corruptions within cloud may result in databases produce incorrect behaviors, as could happen from bugs, internal or ex external attacks, misconfigurations, and expected failures at any layer of this execution stack. So the question is, how can Dana make sure that the, ex the database is executed correctly? First, we need to define correctness. A natural answer is serializability, a contract between databases and their clients. Serializability means that all transactions are executed as if they are executed sequentially in a single copied database. As a generic correctness contract, serializability covers basic data integrity. For example, if a read reading a tempered value that is not from any write, this is a serializability violation. Serializability also implies handling failures robustly when these transactions are executed. Indeed, serializability is the gold standard isolation level and correctness contract that many applications and programmers implicitly assume. So in this work, we focused on serializability. Meanwhile, today's production systems, even the ones that claim to be uh, support serializability, do not do exhibit uh, serializability violations. And this makes sense because it is hard to provide serializability with all the properties, including geo-replicated, geo-distributed, fault tolerance, high performance, scalability, and so on. So in order to enable clients to verify serializability, we have a new technical problem, namely black box checking of serializability while scaling to a real world workloads. To be clear, there are many works that address similar problems. I will talk about them later, but none of prior works can handle our problems with these three requirements. Also, we are not verifying the code of the database. We don't even have it. We are testing to executions of the database. To address this new technical problem, we introduced the system Cobra. Cobra's inputs are what clients have seen, the transactions and their results to and from the database, which we call a history. A history induces a family of graphs. And the problem of checking serializability is to search for one graph in this family that is acyclic, or assert that uh, there's no such graph. But the challenge in practice is that this family is huge. What Cobra does is to systematically narrow the search space by leveraging the semantic of transactions, common patterns we observe in real world workloads, and hardware acceleration. Then after that, Cobra uh, strategically searches in this family by using an SMT solver. Beyond that, in order to support online databases, which have ever-growing and continuous histories, Cobra needs to verify incrementally and garbage collecting the unused transactions. In the rest of my talk, I will introduce a bit more about this underlying problem and then Cobra's solution to tackle this problem. Now onto the first topic. Recall Dana's case. The company's application as clients send transactions to a cloud database, which claims to be serializable. By transactions, I mean a set of read-write operations 
which happen all together, or none of them happen. In this setup, Dana deploys a history collector that captures all the inputs to and outputs from the database. The collector can be a middlebox at the company's network that intercepts the communication between clients and the database. Later, a verifier, which is the machine under Dana's control, gets the history from the collector and must answer the question, are these transactions serializable? This question has been answered by Public Dimitrio many years ago. Public Dimitrio's solution first builds a data structure called polygraph, which represents a family of graphs, as we mentioned earlier. Then it searches for an acyclic graph in this family. Next, I'm going to elaborate these two steps as a starting point of COBRA. The brute force search approach also intuitively shows us why this problem is hard. First, for building a polygraph from a history. Suppose a history has three transactions, read or write a key X. In this talk, let's assume that all the written values are unique. So by pairing the values, we know the fact that T2 reads X from T1 instead of indicated by this edge. In order to have a total order, T3 must either happen before T1 or after T2, indicated by these two dashed edges. T3 cannot happen in between T1 and T2 because otherwise T2 should have read X from T3 instead of T1. Now this is a polygraph where each vertex is a transaction and each edge is a known happen before relationship. In addition, a polygraph has a set of what we call constraints that represent all the unknown but possible happen before relationships. In this example, there's one constraint which reads as either T3 happened before T1 or T2 happened before T3. With this polygraph, one could do a brute force search. First, choose one option in this constraint and check if the newly generated directed graph is acyclic. If it is, then these transactions are serializable. If it's not, then go back and choose the other option. This is a simple polygraph only having one constraint, but one could imagine a polygraph that has many constraints. Then the number of graph in this family is two to the number of constraints. In fact, the problem of searching for an acyclic graph is an NP-complete problem. Now about the details of COBRA. Though the problem in general is NP-complete, our hypothesis is that for real-world workload, checking serializability might be tractable. The guiding intuitions are from the advances of today's SAS solvers and SMT solvers and their accomplishments of heuristically solving many problems which are NP-complete. In particular, we encode the polygraph searching problem into SMT clauses and use SMT solver to solve the problem for us. As an example, let's encode our simple polygraph. First, we encode edges. For a possible edge from transaction I to transaction J, we assign a Boolean variable. True means such an, an edge exists. For example, the edge from T1 to T2 in this case. Second, we encode the constraint into a binary choice that either one edge is true and the other is false or vice versa. Finally, we assert that the graph is acyclic. We then send these clauses to an SMT solver. If the solver's answer is satisfiable, meaning accept, then we know there exists some variable assignments such that there is an acyclic graph. Therefore, the history is serializable. Otherwise, the history is not serializable. This approach works for small workloads. However, for relatively large workloads, like a history with 10,000 transactions, this approach takes hours to finish. This performance challenge comes from constraints. Constraints have a quadratic growth versus the number of transactions. Also, more constraints means more choices, which further complicates the solving procedure. So the question is, 
how to reduce the number of constraints in a polygraph. Cobra introduces, uh, introduces several techniques. In this talk, I will de uh, describe two of them. The first one is called combining writes. Combining writes leverage, leverages read modified write transactions, a common pattern in the real world workloads. Read modified write transactions are transactions that, that read and write the same key. For example, during shopping, a purchasing transaction is a read modified write transaction. It reads the number of items in stock, decrease the number by one, and write it back to the database. From such a transaction, Cobra knows its immediately previous write to the key X. So Cobra can eliminate constraints that other other writes in between the two consecutive uh, writes. For example, in this case, Cobra can summarize the constraints to be one. This is combining writes. One may wonder why cannot an SMT solver do what we do? The answer is that Cobra understands this specific problem better than SMT solvers. In particular, Cobra leverages the semantics of transactions as well as common patterns in the workload. Beyond that, Cobra also does its own specialized, uh, specialized solving, uh, which we call pruning. The idea of pruning is to resolve constraints by the information encoded in graph reachability to see why and how. Uh, there are two questions. What can we learn from graph reachability? And in practice, how can we get reachability quickly? For the first question, let's revisit our polygraph example. If we know the fact that there is a path from T3 to T2, then we can safely conclude that we have to choose the edge T3 to T1, because otherwise there will be a cycle. Thus, we prune one constraint and narrow the, the search space of this problem. But calculating corresponding reachabilities for every constraint is expensive. We'd like to have a Boolean matrix in which each cell ij represents the reachability from transaction i to transaction j. So Cobra uses an algorithm based on matrix mo multiplication to compute such Boolean matrix, including all pairs reachability. Also, Cobra delegates this matrix multiplication to a GPU, which uh, has at least one order of magnitude faster versus its CPU version. In order to scale to an online database that has an ever-growing history, Cobra verifies in rounds. For, from round to round, Cobra needs to delete transactions. Please see the paper for details. Now coming to the evaluation section. In this talk, we'd like to answer two questions. First, what are the verifier's costs and how do those compare to our baseline using SMT solvers only? Second, how much time is spent on each phase of COBRA? For the other questions, please see the paper for details. We experimented with six benchmarks, TPCC, Twitter, Rubies, and our own micro benchmark, Blind Rights, which has different variants for different ratios of reads and writes. We experimented COBRA on three databases, RocksDB, PostgreSQL, and Google Cloud Data Store. Our verifier runs on an EC2 machine with an NVIDIA GPU. Now, for the first question, the verifier's cost and compared to our baseline. With a combination of multiple techniques, some of which I haven't introduced today, Cobra can handle 10 times larger workloads than our baseline, namely using an SMT solver monoset in the first place. This figure shows the difference on uh, one benchmark, blind write, read write. Other benchmarks have similar results. Second, in order to understand the verification performance, we break down the verification time into three phases, constructing polygraphs, pruning constraints, and solving the problem using SMT solvers. In TPCC, all transactions are read modified write. So after combining writes, 
there are no constraints. Therefore, Cobra doesn't prone. In benchmarks with many reads and read modified writes, the dominant component is pruning because after pruning, the search space is small for SMT solvers and the pruning has a fixed running time for a certain graph size. In benchmarks that have the same or more writes than reads, solving is a much larger contributor because COBRA cannot eliminate as many constraints leading to a large search space for SMT solvers. But in real world online transactional workloads, write dominant cases are rare. To recap, COBRA verifies serializability of black box databases while scaling to real world workloads. Now, COBRA, uh, now coming to the related work. COBRA has many related works. We cover the most relevant ones here. Previous serializability checkers for black box databases do not scale to real world workloads. For the workloads we've experimented, previous systems takes tens of minutes to check 1,000 transactions, which doesn't meet our performance requirements. A recent impactful work is L, a checker for testing isolation anomalies. It has detected many bugs in production systems. L works in two modes. In one, it needs to re replace write operations with append operations, therefore does not support all production workloads. In the other, L uses heuristics to identify bugs, which are super useful for testing, but not comprehensive. Another line of work is to check or ensure consistency of storage systems. For example, Concerto is a system that uses uh, deferred verification like COBRA to check the sequential consistency of a non-transactional Kivalo store, but it requires modification to the Kivalo store itself. There are other works in this topic with different characteristics, but none of them solve our problem with, with uh, none of them solve our problem with these three requirements. More broadly, COBRA falls into the topic of execution integrity, which studies how to ensure a piece of code runs as written. These approaches can guarantee that the given programs are executed correctly. But, this, but they require the code. Whereas COBRA only targets serializable databases, not a general program, but works in a black box manner. Okay, finally, to summarize, COBRA verifies serializability of a black box database for real world workloads. Users of cloud databases used to have to assume serializability, but now with COBRA, they can be sure. Thank you.